All right, so uh, let's um, a little bit about the background on uh, on where we are in the, the uh, internet and the web uh, technologies, uh, and uh, where we've been, where we are right now, we might be going, um, and try to you know, try to put us in context on where you know why are we using the certain technologies that uh, we will be using throughout the semester. Um, so as 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 you might uh, be aware of, right, the internet is just uh, it's, uh, the, it's, it's a huge worldwide network of uh, machines that are connected to one another uh, and uh, with the intention of surviving World War III, uh, which uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, I don't know if we've, uh, we've, passed, we've, we've passed that, but we've gone backwards, I don't know. Um, so, so and, and the idea was, was that it, it was a highly redundant network, right, that uh, hopefully could survive you know, of uh, a lot of bombing, and uh, that uh, there was no one point of failure. Uh, that you could always find some ways to connect to points. Uh, you know, with, with a very, very highly redundant system. Um, and uh, you know, I, all all the all the computers on this on this network presumably were uh, equal, right? You can connect from any one machine to any other machine if you knew their IP address. Uh, and there were all sorts of protocols that uh, were used to, you know, transfer data between all these machines. Um, you know, there's FTP, UDP, SMTP, uh, and all the different protocols were uh, for different different purposes, right? Um, and uh, you know, and so you, you could and presumably you could have uh, resources being hosted at one machine that uh, I could you know fetch, right, and then transfer over and copy so that I could read it. Uh, locally in my machine, right? And typically we would use things that, like FTP that would transfer this this data over and copy it on my local machine. I would then use some some uh, uh, some viewer, depending on the type of this document, right? And then I, I could view this document. Uh, uh, some machines became very specialized, uh, perhaps you know beefier machines, machines that would uh, larger, uh, and uh, and they would host lots and lots of documents. Um, or they would they would host also data data sets right data sources uh, that uh, we would not want to replicate all this large uh, information and large documents you know across the network we would put it in a single place uh, and, uh, and and so all the other ones uh, all the other machines could be you know fairly s simple machines uh, just terminals asking for these documents and, you know, for viewing uh, and, uh, and and the, the way it would work is that. Uh, the uh, some 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 machine would ask the, the the other machine to serve or to provide the content for consumption elsewhere. Uh, so so these machines that play that role, you know, they they were referred to as servers, right? Machines that uh, that served, right? Um, and the only difference was that it was running a piece of uh, of software that listened for an incoming uh, call, network connection at a particular port. Right, a particular user following a particular protocol, uh, and then it would just you know do the role of fetching that machine and just uh, uh, data and just streaming it back to somebody who would ask for it, and we would refer to that person, that other machine, as the client. Okay, uh, and this this architecture of client server right has stayed with us uh, for quite a while. It's still uh, very popular, it's still out there, and uh, I don't I don't believe it will ever leave us. Um, and and. Uh, it's it's the same underlying architecture that's been with us and still today is uh, the main organization principle of these uh, of these machines. Um, we we started moving away a little bit from this uh, when we introduced uh, PCs, personal computers, uh, and uh, so instead of you know instead of hosting all this uh, um, uh, all these applications and data, uh, we started. You know, these machines became started to become powerful enough that we could run them on our desktop, have our local databases, our, all, our local file system. Uh, app were were you know fast enough to powerful enough to run applications locally on our machines. So servers became a little less uh, uh, important, um, and uh, so you know the, the way uh, software was, was distributed now is like, you know you, you get your own copy, right? Um, personal copy, as opposed to being hosted on a, on a, on a local machine, on a centralized machine. Um, uh, today, we're kind of going backwards, right? We're, we're now go kind of going back to the dumb terminal, right? The, the, where our dumb terminal is kind of like the browser, which is not so dumb, 
uh, and then and then we have this centralized servers again, right? So it's it's funny how you know history just you know repeats, right? It just goes ups and down and goes up again, and you know it's, uh, so presumably it's in it, you know at some point it'll stabilize and you know who knows where we're going to be end up, right? Uh, so 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 um, it's, it's, uh, 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 Tim Bursley at the um, you know at the beginning of the uh, 1990s. Um, um, I was looking for uh, other mechanisms, right, that uh, you could share uh, this information. Uh, uh, he, th he thought this was somewhat clunky, having to copy a file over and then pro and then opening it with a particular br uh, viewer. Um, he was looking for something that was that, that, that would lower the barrier of sharing the data. I mean, you could all already you could share data, right? You could share files all over the place, but it just wasn't wasn't. Uh, uh, um, wasn't e wasn't easy to, to do right so so he created his his, his own protocol HTTP uh, and and uh, says okay well uh, what I'm going to do is that uh, let's what if we could standardize uh, the the, uh, the the formatting of this of this of this content right what if we could agree on a standard way of formatting this content um, and, and you know so, and we say okay let's say if we if we all agree on a particular format uh, and also if we could agree on on merging together the uh, mechanism that transfers along with a viewer, if, we, if those could be merged together, the, the transferring uh, and the viewing together, right, um, that would improve the, uh, the, the ease of you know, just typing a document, right, it goes and fetches it using this new uh, protocol, we copy it and we just render it, right. Uh, and uh, so this was a fairly uh, um, easy, you know, fa fairly simple idea that it just took off, right? Uh, it uh, all of a sudden it just lowered the bar of entry, right, for the folks that just wanted to be able to share things very easily without having, you know, to use complex formatting and using a Lex uh, converter and you know things that uh, you know you needed a PhD to to know how to use, right? Uh, just with a simple uh, some XML that uh, just simple ASCII code. Um, you know, you could you could create fairly uh, sophisticated uh, formatted documents. Okay, uh, so so this just took off, and and, uh, and uh, inadvertently uh, he invented the World Wide Web, right? Uh, on top of technology that was already there, right? Uh, kind of what the iPhone did, right? Uh, this, all, all the all the technology was there, right? And, uh, iPhone just came and says, "Ooh, what if we grab this, that, and the other, and put it in a nice package, and market it?" Um, it's all in the packaging. And so, so, um, so yeah. So this took off, and uh, the World Wide Web was born. Uh, at first, the, the internet was not meant to be used in uh, in any commercial uh, or entertainment purpose. Right. The, the whole point was to survive World War Three. Uh, you know, there was no intention that this was ever going to be used outside of military uh, um, uh, use. Uh, but but uh, you know uh, um, slowly it was open to research institutions it was open to uh, universities uh, and eventually it was open to commercial for commercial use uh, and so there were so many people just using this uh, and, and creating all this content right HTML and static content that with with so many folks using it a lot of innovation came a lot around and says and quickly we ran into the limitations of HTML. Okay, it says, well, it doesn't allow you to do this and that and the others. You know, this doesn't allow you to do tons and tons of other things that folks were thinking about. It says, uh, uh, you know, what if I want a weather application and uh, and I'm you know I'm accessing from a server on New England, right? I like to see the weather in New England, right? Or if I'm accessing it from Fort Lauderdale, I like to see the weather from Fort Lauderdale, right? HTML couldn't do that, right? It was static. You would always get the same weather of Seattle. Uh, so it says, well, no, I don't want that weather. I want my weather. How do I do that? Right. Uh, so, so that certainly uh, um, that pushed the envelope and said, okay, well, how could we make this HTML so that instead of always being the same HTML, it could be a different HTML? Right. Uh, maybe I could provide some parameter. Right. When I when I'm asking for a document, I could add, pass some parameter, maybe a zip code or something. Right. Uh, and based on that zip code as a parameter. This HTML could be calculated, right? Instead of being fixed, static, it could be generic. It could execute on the server, right? Once it executes on the server, 
you, uh, if you if you give me a zip code from Fort Lauderdale or you give me a zip code from New England, uh, I'll give you different HTML. Right? And so that is what we call today server side, right? Re rendering. You're rendering. You're creating this HTML dynamically on the server, right? It executes. Right? And initially, it was just you know some C. It was just C running on a server. Um, uh oh, is this recording? Goes to sleep, um, and, uh, and 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 this idea just took off, right? It became very very popular. Uh, tons of really good uh, frameworks were created around this idea. Okay, uh, certainly under under this umbrella of, uh, of of technologies, we have ASP, right? We have JSP, we have PHP, we have Python, right? All these all these technologies are server side technologies, right? They render, they do their rendering on the server. They run on the server and they generate some content dynamically on the server, right? Um, and uh, and this has been around for you know for uh, decades, right? Uh, and it has been very very successful, uh, and will be with us for quite a while. And, you know we have very very powerful um, uh, frameworks here. You know we have .NET, you know we have Java, you know we have tons and tons of really mature uh, 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 frameworks, right? That uh, have have done, have pushed the envelope quite a bit, right? And so, so today uh, we're we're somewhat moving away from this, right? Uh, we still have these networks, but they're not uh, to a less extent. They're 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 not providing this content, this dynamic content, right? More, you know, less and less. We're using it for rendering dynamic content. We're using it for many other things, okay? Uh, but less and less for dynamic HTML content. Uh, instead, uh, the, uh, the dynamic uh, HTML content has moved towards the client side, right? Running it on the browser as opposed to running it on the server, right? Uh, 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 an, an example of this is, uh, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers MapQuest. Anybody remember MapQuest? See, nobody does. Uh, it, you know, I used to use MapQuest all the time, right? Up until I discovered uh, Google Maps, right? And uh, you know, they all—they both did exactly the same thing. Uh, they had exactly the same functionality, right? Uh, they both allow you to zoom in and zoom out. They both allow you to pan right and left, right? Search for for a uh, for an address and give me direction between two points. Uh, now the way the way uh, MapQuest was implemented was server side, right? Uh, you click the button to go right to pan right. And that, so the, on the client, you had the dynamic HTML with a, with a map, you clicked right, it posted that request to the server, the server recalculated the new position of the map, and then just served you a new map, right? And if you wanted to zoom in, you clicked on a zoom, it went out to the server, the server calculated the new position of the map, and it gave you, it would, and it would render the entire page, okay? Uh, and, you know, compared to what Google, the, uh, back, uh, Google Maps, the first time I saw it, right, it's, it's just, Wow, just blew me away. Right? It's just you grab the, the, the map and just flicked it, you know, and just this you know complete animation and uh, and just you know very seamless zooming in and zooming out and just panning right and left, right? Uh, you might take that for granted today. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that dates me a little bit, uh, uh, but it was a completely different experience, right? Same functionality, right? Same functionality. It's just a completely different experience, right? Uh, and uh, and, and, and so that, that was a client side application, right? The page never re rendered, right? It gave you direct manipulation of the data, of the, you know, you, you were directly manipulating, right? You, uh, and when you flicked it, uh, what happened is that on the client side, uh, the page was static, right? It was, well, it looked static. Uh, and as you, as you moved and panned and zoomed in, uh, the client using JavaScript would go back to the server, ask for a new, for a new uh, piece of uh, image, but without uh, navigating away from the page, right? You always looked at the same exact page. So it would act really quick, would go out to the server fetching new, new images to fill in the blanks, right? If you flicked it too fast, you saw that there's empty space, right? Uh, the, the earth didn't exist yet. It just, you know, Google makes the, 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 the earth as it goes on the fly. So again, it's a completely different experience. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and Google today, you know, it's, kind of, it's kind of the gold, gold standard of implementing these uh, client-side uh, single-page applications, 
right? Uh, and today it's it's the norm, right? You know, Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, all these you know, all these uh, large corporations. That's all they're doing today, right? They're doing client side uh, uh, rendering, right? Client side application. Uh, and they all fall in the umbrella of SPAs or single page applications. Single page application meaning you navigate to a page, and that page is the only page you ever navigate to. Right? And you interact and, and you manipulate all the things, but you're always in the same page. Right? You, you never refresh the browser. It never navigates away from that page. Right? Uh, new pages might be loaded dynamically right? to give you the sense of navigation, right? that it looks like you're navigating uh, as you go from one to another, perhaps going to a post or comment, right? uh, reading a particular email and then going back. Right? So it looks like you're navigating, but you're still in the same page. Right, all the content is dynamically being injected uh, into the DOM. You know, so it's a completely different way of thinking about uh, uh, web, uh, web, web applications. Uh, and the reason for this is that uh, 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 more and more uh, folks that uh, were using these applications were demanding that, hey, why? You know, if I look at my desktop applications, they're very dynamic. Right, they're very responsive and. You know, I can drag and drop and resize, and why don't my web applications behave the same? Why are they so clunky? Why, why does everything have to refresh and re recycle, right? It, uh, uh, so, so we were demanding that kind of uh, uh, you know, interaction with our applications. Uh, obviously, Google had a large portion of that, of you know, reinventing how do you build uh, web applications. Uh, and uh, it just took off. It just, it's t and today is pretty much the standard. Um, everybody okay? Right. Uh, so, so I wanted to just show you the, a little bit of the anatomy of what these single page applications uh, look like. Uh, and uh, the idea would be that uh, you just have the, the browser here. Uh, you have a server uh, and you have a database. And uh, so, uh, so in a single page application, uh, from the browser, you ask the server for uh, index.html, right? It's the this is the default page, right? That a server gives you if you don't know what you're asking for, right? Uh, so it's it's a, it's typically it's the entry point to a website or, or a web page. Uh, so that index.html is a it's a document, it's a static document from the from the point of view of the uh, of the server. From the point of view of the server, it's only ever serving static content. It has no idea that this will eventually become dynamic when it gets to the browser. You know, as far as the server is concerned, this is all static content, right? Uh, so anyway, so the index page gets copied over, and that index page references uh, other files back on the server. You know, it references uh, some CSS. It references JavaScript. Okay, it doesn't reference any HTML, um, and uh, so once the browser sees these references, it goes back and asks for all these, right? And they get downloaded and copied themselves over to the browser. Uh, one particular JavaScript is going to be the entry point to our application, right? Typically, it will be referred to maybe as app.js, maybe, right? It's the entry point. Uh, that is where everything starts, okay? Where everything starts. Uh, typically, uh, there'll there'll be some. Uh, um, before I get there, uh, if you look at this index page, right, if you look at this index page, typically it'll be uh, an empty page. It'll have nothing in it, just an empty space, right? An empty div with nothing in it, no HTML in it. It says, "Where's my page? Where's my content?" Right? If you go and visit any of these uh, uh, any of these single page applications, and you look. Uh, you ask the server, and you, and, you, and you ask, hey, server, what did you download? I want to look at the code that was downloaded. You look, you'll notice that all these pages are empty. Right? There will just, be just three or four lines of code. It says, where's the page? Says, I'm looking at all this content, all these posts, all these images, all this. Where is it? Where's every, everything? Uh, and, and the reason is that the index page comes in, and there's nothing in it. Okay? Uh, the content is dynamically injected, right? dynamically added to it. Um, afterwards by the application, by the JavaScript application. Uh, in here you have configurations and saying what is the first page you want to see. Uh, and 
and you go and fetch it. Right? For instance, say the first page is um, you know, the list of all my posts right, in Twitter. Okay? Uh, so you'll get, you go to some, you go back to the server asking something like API post, right, all my posts or all my tweet, tweets, okay, no plural. Um, this, this is interpreted by the service as, oh, you want the list of all your tweets, okay? Uh, and, uh, and so, this, so there'll be a route here listening for that incoming API call uh, that executes on the server that makes a database call. And uh, the database typically will be Mongo, which will come back with an array of JSON objects, of JavaScript objects. Okay? Uh, and that array is then sent back to the, to the client, to our application. All right, and then and here's where it's going to iterate over this. It's going to iterate over this and dynamically inject the content into the browser. All right, use JavaScript to dynamically add pieces of the HTML on the on the on the on the browser. Okay, uh, typically using a template, perhaps a template saying that I want to use the UL uh, line items for each each post. Right, I'll give it a template. Uh, and then, and then my JavaScript will grab this and copy and paste each one of these for every item in the array. Okay, uh, and whatever you give it as a template, right? Typically styled with some background color, some foreground color, some images, some whatnot, right? Some fonts in here. Uh, it'll copy and paste, iterate over my array, copy and pasting, you know, this line item that has been styled. Yes. Right? And at the end, if you inspect uh, the DOM, the document object model, you'll notice that you have a UL in there. Right? And you have an LI that magically appeared. Right? It was added by JavaScript. Make sense? Right? Uh, so, so notice that uh, the, the, the content that comes back, all the, the HTML that comes back from here, is just snippets of HTML, snippets, and, and we, we call them templates. Right? They're not meant to be standalone HTML documents, right? They're not meant to be opened up and looked at as a standalone uh, document. They're meant as <clears throat> pieces, right? That are then used to assemble a larger a larger page, right? Uh, so each piece could be very modular, right? It could be a reusable module that can be reused in many pieces of your of your code, right? Uh, that can be injected at any time to build a larger application. Make sense? Everybody still with me? All right. Okay. All right, so that's that's the anatomy of what we're going to be uh, building. Uh, let me stop this.